WCW Super Brawl 9 took place on February 21st, 1999 in Oakland, California. The show brought in just under 16,000 fans to the Oakland Arena and around 485,000 fans bought the show on pay-per-view. WCW's biggest buy rate since Dennis Rodman and Carl Malone showed up at Bash at the Beach 98. Our main event features Hulk Hogan defending his World Heavyweight Championship against WCW President Ric Flair and we're also going to see DDP finally get his hands on Scotty Steiner. The show opened up with a clip from Thunder, Tori Wilson, who would become known as Samantha in WCW but is still currently a mystery woman with no name, receives tickets to attend Super Brawl from the Mystery Man. Also on Thunder, the Mystery Man gave Scott Hall's cattle prod to Samantha after attending some sort of meeting. So it appears that our Mystery Man's either in the NWO or he's well acquainted with the NWO. We're going to find out during tonight's pay-per-view. Disco Inferno is now officially part of the Wolfpack, Scott Hall confirmed it this past week on Thunder. His opponent tonight, Booker T, is on a mission to get back to where he was before he got injured by Bret Hart. But Disco's been on a road since aligning himself with the NWO and Disco should not be underestimated. The Inferno's first to go down after a hip toss, but he gets super confident after coming back with a swinging neckbreaker. The crowd aren't buying into Disco at all though as they chant Disco sucks before the two lock up again. And this time Disco takes a body slam, but he replies right away with an arm drag. Whatever's gotten into Disco Inferno, it's definitely working. Unfortunately for Disco though, old habits die hard. He panders to the crowd and Booker takes advantage. Disco then takes a back body drop followed by a few chops in the corner and a corner clothesline. Booker then hits his running forearm that only gets a two, but Booker gets caught out with a kick to the midsection and Disco brings it down with a sleeper. After fighting out, Booker looks for a Harlem sidekick but Disco moves out of the way. Booker then gets clotheslined out of the ring and Disco follows his opponent out to do some damage at the ring steps. Back inside the ropes, we see Disco's second rope elbow drop, but it takes way more than that to defeat Booker T. A spinning heel kick from Booker gets followed up with his signature axe kick. Disco's able to stun Booker before going to the second rope again, but this time Booker counters and we see the spine buster. For those curious, Tony Schiavone's still calling this a sidewalk slam. Disco throws one more Hail Mary when he turns Booker inside out with a clothesline. He then goes for the chart buster, but he's unable to connect. So Booker ends it with a Harlem sidekick followed by the Harlem hangover. A decent enough opener here from WCW. In comparison to the WWF's and Valentine's Day Massacre opener, it was like Steamboat vs Savage. Booker T comes out with a win and he did get a good enough match out of Disco, so no complaints. On Thunder, Ralphus showed Perry Saturn how you're really supposed to wear a dress and yeah, old Ralphus pulls it off quite well. This rivalry between Jericho and Saturn continues at Super Brawl with Jericho facing Perry once again on pay-per-view. If Saturn wins, it'll be Jericho wearing a dress and Saturn can go back to wrestling in his usual ring gear. Rolfus comes to the ring with Jericho, looking like the pretty little flower he really is. Scott Dickinson's suspension is up by the way, he's refereeing this match. And check it out, Saturn's now wearing eyeliner to go along with his dress. Very soon he'll have lipstick and a big permed wig just to complete the look. Before the match, Chris says Saturn's an embarrassment, a cross-eyed, cross-dressing freak. Chris tells Saturn to take the dress off because he looks ridiculous, but Perry likes his little dress and instead he floors Jericho with a clothesline. It doesn't take long before the two are fighting in the crowd with Saturn maintaining control of the match. When they get back at ringside though, Jericho's able to throw Perry into the guardrail and Saturn gets his head smacked on the ring steps. Inside the ropes, Perry wakes up and Jericho takes an exploder suplex, a back suplex and a catapult to the outside. Saturn then wipes Chris out with a plancha and Perry then sets his sights on Rolfus. No doubt Perry's a little jealous of Rolfus and that sexy dress he has on. Only one man's allowed to wear a dress around these neck of the woods, so Saturn strips Rolfus down to his boxer shorts and god bless Rolfus, he just doesn't know what to do. Jericho takes this opportunity to dropkick Perry and Saturn takes a vertical suplex. Perry replies by smashing Jericho's face into the mat over and over again. The commentators point out that Scott Dickinson has called this one right down the middle as Chris hits a missile dropkick to the outside. And back in the ring, Chris sets Perry up for an aerial attack. I have no idea what Chris was trying to do here, but it didn't work. 
Perry shows Jericho how it's done with a top rope splash. He then puts Jericho's head under his dress for a few mounted punches and I can only imagine the smell. Chris counters with a lion tamer attempt, Perry counters that with a roll up. Jericho kicks out a two and Perry takes a German suplex. This has been a pretty good match so far. Chris goes up top for a crossbody but Perry rolls through and he locks in the rings of Saturn. Chris makes it to the bottom rope and Dickinson orders a break, so Perry delivers a falcon arrow before going for a lion salt. Perry misses and Jericho shows Saturn how it's supposed to be done. Saturn kicks out a two and he sets Jericho up for a death volley driver. Jericho takes the move and all Perry has to do is pin his opponent. Unfortunately for Scott Dickinson, Perry remembers what he did to him and Dickinson, who did call this one down the middle, also takes a DVD. Saturn leaves the ring while saying life's a drag, so Chris Jericho wins via disqualification. Solid match, Perry could have pinned Chris if he really wanted to, but it appears Saturn's pretty comfortable wrestling his future matches while wearing a dress. Chavo Guerrero Jr. gets a shot at Billy Kidman's cruiserweight title next. These two teamed up in the WCW Tag Team title tournament. Their relationship was a bit shaky, so they're having a match at Super Brawl with Kidman's belt up for grabs. We established early on that Chavo Guerrero is now a heel. He's taking shortcuts and getting in cheap shots at every possible opportunity. A head scissor takedown from Kidman gets followed up with an arm drag and a dropkick forces Chavo to the outside. And as Chavo comes in to take more punishment, Tony Schiavone announces that Lex Luger is injured and he won't be taking part in the scheduled mask versus hair tag match tonight. A replacement's going to get announced later on. Chavo gets thrown into the guardrail and back in the ring he begs for mercy. Chavo wants a handshake so Kidman gives him a clothesline. The two end up on the apron where Chavo unceremoniously dumps his opponent into the guardrail and when the two get back inside the ropes Kidman takes a brain buster. This one is not playing out like a typical cruiserweight match, Chavo's much more aggressive than usual. Speaking of aggressive, there's a chin lock, have mercy Chavo. Kidman finds himself on the outside again and Chavo pulls off a somersault plancha and our referee Johnny Moon thinks a knee to the neck is perfectly legal as he counts a pen attempt. Kidman kicks out at one. A field corner attack allows Kidman to hit a diving crossbody. Chavo answers with a tilt award backbreaker followed by a back suplex. Guerrero then goes up top to hit a big splash but Kidman delivers a dropkick and the timing was spot on here. Great job from both men. The champ hits a tornado crossbody but a drop to a hold stuns Kidman long enough for Chavo to set up a super hurricane rana. The back and forth action continues with a BK bomb from Kidman and a draping DDT from Guerrero. But the match ends with a face buster from the champ followed by a shooting star press. Super Brawl is currently 3 for 3. I wouldn't say the matches so far are must see or anything but they're all in that pretty good tier. Let's just pray that the main eventers don't fumble it. Rick Steiner and Kenny Chaos gave up their tag team titles when Rick got injured. President Ric Flair wanted to re-establish tag team wrestling in WCW, so a tournament was held to crown new tag team champions. The NWO tried to stop the tournament but we've made it to the finals here at Super Brawl. Our two final teams are Kurt Hennig and Barry Windham and four horsemen members Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit. The tournament was changed to double elimination, meaning you had to lose two matches in order to get knocked out. Benoit and Malenko already have a loss while Hennig and Wyndham have a perfect record, so the horsemen need to beat their opponents twice tonight while Hennig and Wyndham only need to win once. Interestingly, all four men in this match were horsemen at one time or another, and it starts off with Dean Malenko getting the better of Barry Windham. Dean had an answer for everything. The two men tagged out and Kurt Hennig made the mistake of chopping Chris Benoit. Benoit came back with a chop of his own that made Kurt back up, and the two then went into a test of strength with Benoit coming out on top following a bridge. Kurt makes it to the ropes for a break, and things then get a little scrappy when both guys start smacking each other around the face. The crowd pops when a big chop from Benoit sends Kurt Hennig flying into the air, and the team of Hennig and Wyndham decide to refocus on the outside. Not a great start for the heels. Barry Wyndham comes in and he feels what it's like to get chopped by Chris Benoit. Malenko tags in and Barry delivers a big suplex to the Iceman. Kurt then comes in and Dino Machino takes a double clothesline, and Malenko finds himself in the wrong corner as Barry Wyndham gives his partner an assist from the apron. Malenko tags out, and you know what, it's refreshing that we aren't seeing the usual hot tag routine that we've become accustomed to recently, especially in WWF tag matches. This looks like a straight up no nonsense tag team fight and it's good to see the formula getting changed up a bit for a pay per view match. 
Hennig sells the corner throw like he's just taken a shotgun blast to the back and when Wyndham comes in, Chris fights both men all by himself. Dean comes back in to deliver a back suplex and when his horseman teammate enters the match again, we see the flying headbutt. Wyndham's right there though to break up the cover. Malenko gets frustrated when Mickey J gets distracted by Wyndham, so Dean takes it out on Kurt by putting him on the top rope and hitting a dropkick. A gut wrench slam from Barry Wyndham leads to Benoit breaking the cover. Again, the referee gets distracted and the heels get a chance to do a little damage to Dean on the outside. But they didn't do enough damage as Malenko is able to tag out and Benoit comes back in. Kirk gets messed up after a hook clothesline, he goes to the wrong corner and he tries to tag in Malenko. Chris prevents Kurt from tagging out so Hennig performs an inverted atomic drop and then in comes Wyndham. Barry performs a ring shake and superplex and Kurt comes back in to help with a double suplex. The heels then single out Benoit for a moment but a German suplex from Chris allows Dean to come back in and Dean's now all fired up. Stingo Malenko wrecks both Kurt Hennig and Barry Wyndham with ease and he manages to put Wyndham in the cloverleaf. Hennig breaks it up so Dean locks it in again and Barry Wyndham tops out. Hennig and Wyndham now have a loss in this tag team tournament so whoever wins the next fall wins the championships. There was supposed to be a 30 second break here but Benoit and Hennig keep fighting and this keeps Mickey J busy while Barry Wyndham takes his belt off. Malenko goes for another cloverleaf and Wyndham wraps the belt around Malenko's neck. When the two go to the mat, Wyndham continues to choke Malenko out and Mickey J then rushes over to count a pinfall. Wyndham and Hennig win the second match and the tag team tournament comes to an end with Wyndham and Hennig leaving Super Brawl as the new tag team champions. Again, a good deviation here from the standard tag team matches that we've become accustomed to. From this point on though, the big boys are taking over Super Brawl with a string of big headline matches. So let's see if things can stay on track. Lex Luger wanted Rey Mysterio to remove his LWO shirt and his mask. Rey not only defied the total package, but he wanted to prove himself by fighting Lex at Super Brawl. Conan and Rey challenge Lex and Kevin Nash to a tag team match. If Conan and Rey lose, then Rey will unmask in the middle of the ring. If Conan and Rey win, then either Lex or Nash are going to have to shave their heads. Nash decided that Miss Elizabeth should shave her head if worse comes to worst, so either way we're going to see Rey Mysterio without a mask or a bald Miss Elizabeth. We see who Lex's replacement is for this match and it's Scott Hall. Tony Schiavone says this is a great choice and it makes sense but I don't know. Scott has a match tonight for the US Championship so if the NW wanted to attain some new gold then I might have saved Scott and put someone else in there. There's plenty of NW guys to choose from. Still, I'm not complaining, Scott Hall pulling double duty works for me as a viewer and Scott's just proving again why he's the hardest worker in the whole history of the NWO. Scott messes with Ray and the crowd pop when he throws his toothpick. Ray throws his gum at Hall and he misses by a mile. So Scott shoves Mysterio into the corner with a lot of force. Scott overpowers Ray again and Ray realizes he's gonna have to use his speed to overcome the bad guy. So Scott takes a quick arm drag and this gets followed up with a springboard leg drop. Mysterio shows he's not intimidated by the NWO when he performs a springboard seated senton and Kevin Nash gets smacked in the face too for good measure. But Ray gets too confident and he ends up getting caught out with a fallaway slam. Big Kevin Nash gets tagged in and Mysterio takes a huge bail across the ring. Mysterio tries a sunset flip but it ends pretty badly when Nash grabs Ray by the neck and he throws him high in the air. Nash decides he's gonna let Scott have a little more fun and we can see here that Scott is once again wearing a Razor Ramon elbow pad under his red and black elbow pad. Ray gets smacked about before Hall performs a corner clothesline. Hall signals for the end and he goes for the outsider's edge but Mysterio gets down while up in the crucifix position and he tags in K-Dog. The crowd goes nuts as Conan cleans house, the roof comes off the place. Nash gets knocked out of the ring and Conan tries to focus on Hall but Big Sexy's right there at the apron to help his tag team partner out. The arena goes quiet when Conan takes a clothesline and Big Sexy then comes in to line up a back elbow and choke K-Dog with his big boot. When Hall tags back in, Conan's forced to fight his way out of the NWO corner. He goes for the rolling lariat but Scott dodges it, leading to both men getting wiped out after a double clothesline and both men then struggle on the mat to make it to their respective corners. The boys tag out, Mysterio comes in with two springboard drop kicks, Nash gets knocked down with a spinning wheel kick and Mysterio uses Nash as a springboard to get at Scott Hall. 
Conan comes back in and we get some awesome double teamwork when Conan monkey flips Mysterio into Nash for a dropkick. Mysterio follows this up with a Bronco Buster to Scott Hall, but Lex Luger then pulls Conan out of the ring and Ray's left all alone with the outsiders. A springboard moonsault leads to Nash taking a knee to the head, Big Sexy's knocked out cold, Ray covers the former world champion but Miss Elizabeth gets on the apron to distract Randy Anderson. This allows Scott Hall to come in and hit Ray with an outsider's edge, and that's it all over. Hall pulls his partner over Ray for the cover, and the Outsiders defeat Ray Mysterio and Conan. Mysterio has to take his mask off. He and Eddie Guerrero were able to stop this happening before, but Eric Bischoff wasn't a fan of mask superstars, and Ray said that once again, it was either lose the mask or lose his job. Conan tells his friend it's gonna be okay before untying the mask, and there you go, Rey Mysterio Jr. losing his trademark mask and a piece of his wrestling heritage. Kevin Nash has already seen enough and he wants Rey to put the mask back on, but Mysterio drops the mask in the ring and he leaves with Conan. Nash just can't help himself, Big Sexy mocks Rey by putting the mask on, and yeah, it's not a great fit is it? DDP vs Scott Steiner is personal, very personal. Scott's been stalking DDP's wife Kimberly, and it got pretty rough when Kim ended up in a car with Steiner and she took a nasty spill out of the moving vehicle. So right now DDP wants to kill Scott Steiner. Steiner said on Thunder that if he wins this match tonight at Super Brawl, he wants 30 days with Mrs. Page, and I don't think DDP actually agreed to that stipulation, it's a bit risky if you ask me. The big bad booty daddy brings a fan into the ring, he says when Big Papa Pump's in town, his hooches come around, and he also says that it's not his fault that Kimberly digs Scotty Steiner. DDP makes his way down to the ring while Steiner leaves it, Paige has to chase Scott on the outside and when he gets his hands on him, Steiner takes a beating. Scott again tries to run away when he gets inside the ropes but it's no good, so Scott decides he has to fight back and he brings it to the mat with a double leg takedown. The two roll around on the mat throwing punches, and when the two get up, Scott rakes DDP in the face, but DDP gets a boot up in the corner. The commentators put over how much of a sicko Scott Steiner really is as the two fight on the outside again. Scott gets back inside the ropes first and he tries his best to keep Paige from entering the ring, but a neck snap from Dallas followed by a diving clothesline brings him back into the match. Buff Bagwell then shows up, I was wondering where he was to be honest. The diving clothesline busted Scott open and Bagwell runs down to see if his buddy's okay, but Scott's more concerned right now about using Bagwell to his advantage against DDP. The NWO guys plan on jumping Paige inside the ring, Paige says bring it on while throwing the referee to one side, and after a few inverted atomic drops and a double clothesline, the NWO lads get taken out and Paige is now looking very good here. Unfortunately though, the numbers game always catches up in these types of situations and Steiner's able to floor DDP thanks to a distraction from Buff. It goes to the outside again where Bagwell throws Paige into the guardrail and Steiner's right there to pick up the pieces. Back inside the ring, Paige takes another clothesline and Scotty Steiner also drops an elbow on Dallas. Paige gets choked out while hung up in the tree of woe, Scott pummels his opponent in the center of the ring, it goes back to the corner where Paige takes more right hands, and Steiner then pulls off a belly to belly. We see that Buff Bagwell's left a chair in the ring as Scott performs a backbreaker, Scott then cracks the chair across Dallas's back, and look, that no good son of a bitch Buff Bagwell's now trying to take the turnbuckle pad off while Paige avoids a Steiner recliner. How can DDP win this thing? Robinson notices what Bagwell just did and he gets sent to the backstage area for being an annoying little shit. Paige and Steiner are now fighting on the outside and when Charles takes the chair away from Scott, the referee's forced to run for his life. Luckily for Robinson, Paige was ready to intercept Big Papa Pump. Back in the ring, Scott stops a top rope move and he's able to go up and deliver a Super Frankensteiner. Scott's surprised when DDP manages to kick out and Scott ends up getting planted with a Diamond Dream DDT, though Scott's also able to kick out. The match ends when Paige goes for a diamond cutter but Scott counters and DDP gets his head drilled into that exposed turnbuckle pad. Scott then rams Dallas' back into the exposed steel over and over again, and that's it, all Scott has to do is lock in the recliner. DDP tries to fight it but it's no use, his face goes blue as he passes out. The referee calls for the bell and Scott Steiner wins the match, and now Steiner thinks he has 30 days with Mrs. Kimberly Page. Scott leaves the ring with his TV belt while DDP leaves on a stretcher, a bad day at the office for Dallas Page. This match was okay, it was nothing special, I think it could have been better what with the story the two had going into it but it was still alright. Scott Steiner's on a roll though, and by this point, Scotty definitely deserved to be in the main event picture.
President Ric Flair named Chris Benoit the number one contender for the US build and Scott Hall took exception to this. So Scott defeated Benoit on Nitro to take that number one contender spot away from Chris. At this point, fans were expecting Scott Hall vs Bret Hart at Super Brawl, but Flair said Scott was getting his opportunity taken away from him in favour of Roddy Piper getting a US title shot on Monday Nitro. Piper defeated Bret with the help of Will Sasso, Scott said he still deserved his title match, so Piper's going to defend the belt tonight against the bad guy at Super Brawl. Double duty Scott Hall comes to the ring with Disco Inferno. The entrances are a little rushed as Piper's music plays before Scott even makes it to the ring, and it begins with Piper using his kill to great effect when he blinds Scott Hall for a few cheap shots. Scott then gets choked out with his own NWO shirt and Piper then performs an ear clap. I hate that move so, so much. Piper slaps and kicks his opponent on the mat and Scott quickly gets to his feet to mock the hot rod. But Piper answers right away with a swinging neck breaker and... Yeah, I mean, it's a Roddy Piper match in 1999. Everyone loves the hot rod and the guy is a legend, but I think we'd all agree that he was well past it at this point. The two pull each other's hair and Piper brings Scott down to the mat. Disco gets on the apron and he gets his hair scuffed up before taking a right hand. Scott takes another right hand that puts him down again. And after delivering an atomic drop and an inverted atomic drop, the two stand in the ring and they trade eye pokes. Piper then goes out to poke Disco's eyes because this match really needs some more eye poking. Roddy then takes a ring step bump before it gets back in the ring. Scott lays in a few right hands that Roddy doesn't bother selling. And when Piper hits a low blow, there's zero crowd reaction. Scott then hits Piper with a low blow and this match is sinking so, so fast. Piper gets hung up in the tree of woe and Disco chokes the hot rod out. We see Hall's usual abdominal stretch spot. The referee catches Scott cheating, but Piper fails to capitalize after a hip toss. With mercy, the match comes to an end when Scott sets Piper up on the top rope and the hot rod applies his signature sleeper hold. And I've never seen a crowd being so uninterested for a finisher before in my life. They are not into this match at all and I don't blame them either. Disco jumps in the ring, Piper takes him out. The crowd finally makes a little noise when Kevin Nash shows up and when Piper tries to fight Kevin off, Scott takes advantage and he covers Piper for the win. Scott Hall's the new US champion and this was easily the worst match on the card so far. It was also one of the worst US title matches I've ever watched. Piper doesn't want to hand over the US belt. He seems a little confused as to how he lost this match. Scott wants Piper to hand over the belt but instead he throws it on the mat and Scott's forced to pick it up. Piper takes the belt again when Scott tries to cheap shot him but Disco gets it back and it all ends with Piper escaping and a beating from the outsiders. A terrible match here, but the NWO now hold the US title, the TV title and the World Heavyweight title. Somehow, the NWO have flourished under Ric Flair's presidency. Next up, it's a match that's long overdue, Bam Bam Bigelow vs Bill Goldberg. You don't need to know the build up for this, all you need to know is that Bam Bam's been interfering in Goldberg matches for a very long time, but finally the two are going to step in the ring and hopefully they can move on to something else when this match comes to an end. The crowd are definitely awake for this one as neither man wins the initial lockup. The referee has to step in to separate the men during the second lockup. Bigelow gets in a cheap shot and Goldberg hits the canvas after a shoulder block. And the crowd lose their collective mind when Goldberg catches Bigelow for a fallen power slam. Billy Boy's feeling it tonight at Super Brawl. Goldberg hits a big jump and shoulder tackle before picking Bigelow up for a fireman's carry. Bigelow then finds himself in a cross arm breaker, but he makes it to the bottom rope and the move gets broken up. Goldberg then pulls off a drop kick. Yeah, he's doing drop kicks now. And Bigelow gets sent to the outside following a clothesline. Bam Bam's able to elbow Billy Boy right in the dick though and Bigelow begins focusing on Bill's knee. It looks like Goldberg's been hurt and Bam Bam might have a chance of winning this thing if he keeps pressure on the injured body part. Back inside the ring, Bam Bam focuses on his mission. He applies a modified step over toe hold before dropping an elbow. It goes back to the mat for another submission and Goldberg tries to key a wrist lock but he's unable to do so. Bigelow then applies a chin lock which makes absolutely no sense at all but who am I to complain? When Goldberg fights out, it's straight back to the knee and oh, playing with fire guys, chin lock number two. Unfortunately, we do not see chin lock number three because we're now in the final moments of the match. Goldberg gets out of a back suplex, Bigelow body slams his opponent, Goldberg takes a dive and headbutt and when Goldberg kicks out, Bam Bam goes for a moonsault. Goldberg throws Bam Bam off the top rope before lining up a spear, but Bigelow gets out of the ring. When the match resumes, Goldberg looks for the spear again and he nails it. And instead of going for the jackhammer, Goldberg decides to hit a standing sidekick and Bigelow takes another spear. 
Finally, Goldberg hits that jackhammer and Bigelow takes a loss at Super Brawl 9. The payoff to the long buildup was not good, I'm afraid, and while this match wasn't as bad as Piper vs. Hall, it still wasn't all that good. WCW really should have had something a bit more elaborate planned for this match, seeing as so much time was invested in the build. The quality of this pay-per-view has dipped quite a lot here, but it's now time for the main event, another Ric Flair vs Hulk Hogan WCW pay-per-view match. Seeing as Ric Flair's president of WCW, he decided to book himself in a title match against Hogan tonight at Super Brawl. The storyline, however, has centered around Eric Bischoff and the jobs that Eric Bischoff's been given from Ric Flair. Flair's made Bischoff sell merchandise, clean the toilet, set up the ring, things like that. But all these little jobs have backfired thanks to Eric using his new assignments to help the NWO win matches. This was taken to a new level on Nitro this past Monday when Bischoff drove Ric Flair's limousine. Bischoff took a little diversion and Flair ended up getting jumped by the NWO, but Flair came back to the arena just like he's coming back to Oakland tonight to try to win the WCW Heavyweight Championship. Hogan, meanwhile, along with his backer Michael Lacker buddy from the Hells Angels, stalked David Flair, but David came to no harm apparently, so who knows what's going on there, it's kinda weird. I do have my suspicions though. Say what you want about constant Flair vs Hogan matches, but this pay per view did good business for WCW. Both men may be well past their best days, but WCW fans wanted to see these two go at it once again for the company's biggest prize. Let's see if they delivered in the Super Brawl 9 main event. The two stare each other down and they circle around the ring before locking up. Hogan gets the better of Flair on two separate occasions, but Flair's able to apply a hammerlock before delivering a hard chop in the corner. The commentators talk about Flair dedicating this match to his son David after what the NWO did to him at sold out as the nature boy gets punished in the corner. Rick takes a back body drop before getting clotheslined in the opposite corner. The nature boy hits the mat hard but he kicks out at two. Hogan gets in a few knife edge chops before Slick Rick returns the favour. The Nature Boy performs his signature leg drop next but Hollywood replies with a clothesline from the corner. Looks like we're getting the greatest hits out of the way early as Rick goes up and over the turnbuckle. And then, on the outside, Hollywood Hogan grabs a steel chair. We all know the Hulkster isn't well known for his sick chair shots. Here we go, here we go and uh, yeah, that could have been better. Charles Robinson tries to grab the chair when Hogan swings at Rick's back and Hogan tells Charlie he better better watch his ass. Charles unfortunately doesn't have a mirror right now. We see that Rick's been busted open as the two begin fighting at the guardrail. Hogan gets the better of Rick and Hollywood takes a bite out of Rick's forehead. Hollywood then performs a suplex on the outside and back in the ring the greatest hits continue with Flair getting thrown off the top rope. After a few punches Rick Flair stands up and he tells the Hulkster to bring it. The crowd pop for this as Hogan looks a little shocked. Rick then backs up as Hogan approaches him and we see that that laceration is pretty bad as the two start fighting in the corner. Again Hogan gets the better of Flair here and it looks like the nature boy's done for. Hogan takes off his weight belt and he whips Rick just like he did back at Super Brawl to Rick's son David. Flair stands up again and Hogan is not afraid at all to whip Flair right in the face. And gotta say, this has been a pretty entertaining match so far. You know what to expect when Hogan and Flair get in the ring but they're changing this one up a bit and it's good to see. It goes to the corner where Hulk absorbs a few chops and the crowd pop when Hogan no sells. It's like the red and yellow Hogan comes back for just a moment and the audience went wild for it. A poke to the eye and two low blows bring Rick back into the match though and Rick then takes Hogan's weight belt to give Hollywood a piece of his own medicine. Hogan then gets punched in the corner and look at that for a blade job. Smooth, quick but in view of practically everyone in the arena. Flair takes a bite out of Hogan this time and we even see the Hogan flop but this unfortunately is the end of our match, I was just getting into it. The mystery woman, or Samantha or Tori Wilson, walks down to the ring. She gets on the apron and she smacks Ric Flair and she then stands by the ring to watch the remainder of the match. The referee then goes down after Hogan kicks out of a pin attempt and Hogan also drops an elbow on Charles Robinson to keep him down. Hogan has a plan here. Flair takes a big boot followed by a body slam. Hogan misses the leg drop though so Rick's still in with a chance. A masked man then walks down to the ring, this must be the guy Samantha was talking to. He gets inside the ropes and he sticks a cattle prod in Flair's back as the nature boy applies the figure 4 and this leads to Hollywood Hogan winning the match. Hulk celebrates with the mystery man and the mystery woman, the ski mask gets removed and… Oh, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. 
David Flair is part of the NWO, the NWO Wolfpack may I add. Just when you thought the NWO's cool factor couldn't get any lower, <laughs> David Flair, my my. Obviously, the NWO used Samantha to seduce young David, and seeing as his future prospects of getting a hot woman were slim to none, David was easy to rope in. He gives his dad another shock before the show goes off the air, and there you have it. The match turned into a bloodbath towards the end. I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy it to a certain extent, but, <laughs> but David Flair, the man who I believe has had the worst match in Nitro history so far. David joining the NWO is another nail in the New World Order's coffin. I thought this pay per view was good, and as a complete show, I thought it was better than the WWF St. Valentine's Day Massacre event that happened a week prior. Austin vs. McMahon was incredibly entertaining at the WWF event, but Super Brawl was a better package overall. Hall vs. Piper was rough, that match brought Super Brawl way down. Bigelow vs. Goldberg was also disappointing, but I had fun watching every other match on this card, so yeah, Super Brawl 9 comes recommended. Good job, WCW. The issue WCW has right now, though, is their Nitro program. Too much filler and not enough matches and promos that people actually care about. So let's see if the story's the same as always tomorrow night on WCW's flagship TV show. I'll hopefully see you all for Reliving the War next week. Thank you so much for watching this video and check out Super Brawl 9 when you get a chance. A very underrated show here that I think you'll enjoy. Again, thank you and take care.